by nature. It's like you're going to add what you've learned from somebody else mm. into your own thing. It just kind of comes your own amalgam Play-Doh ball of whatever as you as you mold it into what's yours eventually. I'm just interested in a lot of different things in martial arts, and I think like the key of it is I like the movement of it all. Mm. And the more I train, the more I realize like all the arts just have different methodologies to get to the same thing. And What's happening, everybody? Welcome. It's another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today I'm talking to Nick Ackman. Nick, thanks for being here. How you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'm <laughs> glad we get to do this. I, I've been wanting to talk, do this for a while. And we get to do it in person. It's That's awesome. so great. Yeah. Well, it, it, hopefully. It hasn't happened yet. Might not be awesome. Well, we might be terrible. Uh, I, I doubt that. <laughs> I, I might be terrible. You haven't had a terrible one that I've listened to to date, so. Oh, you. I, hopefully, I'm not to stop for that. We have different opinions <laughs> of, of some of my episodes, especially the early ones. Mm. Uh, this is what stuff. this is that <laughs> <laughs> this is how this episode is going to go. I'm really excited. Yeah. If you're new to the show, make sure you check out all the things that we do at Whistlekick. Whistlekick.com is the place to go for all the things. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio is the place to go for all the things related to the show. All the episodes we've ever done, 900 and whatever, I don't know what number this is yet. Andrew knows, he's in the other room. But why do we do this? We do this to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. We bring people together. You saw some of that yesterday, Free Training Day Mid-Atlantic. And one of the companies that is on board with this mission is Kataro. And if you're watching, you can see I've got this belt bag, which I'm really digging putting my belt in a bag. There's something that just feels very nice ceremonial about this. And they sell these bags and, you know, they're, they're not expensive. And you can use the, the code WK10, cap, dub, cap, K, 10 to save 10% on your first order of anything. But we've also got the, the whistle kick belt, which they helped us put together. Um, it's a fun belt. Do you know the story on this belt? Like, have I told you what this belt? No. So, um, black on one side, white on the other. The black wears through to white. The white wears through to black. Cool. And uh, you can get that. You can, you know, put your name on it or the bars on it. Right. They do free rank stripes for life. They do some cool stuff. Kataro is a great company. K a t a a r o dot com. Thank you to Kataro for sponsoring this episode and all the other great stuff that they do. They're an awesome company. I'm glad we get to work with them. Cool. So. Nick, you're here. I am. We are chatting. Right. We met face to face for the first time at Mid Atlantic last year. Correct. Yeah. Which was, it's always weird for me when I get to meet someone in person when I've known them for a while and talk to them a lot mm -hmm. because, it, in one sense, it's very exciting to kind of close the loop on, hey, now we're in the same place. But it's also a bit anticlimactic because it's usually when you meet a person, you don't know the person. Right. And I felt like I know you and I've gotten to know you even better right. over the last year. Like we spent very little time together last year. Right. And when I get somebody in the chair, I don't, I don't usually know as much about them as I know about you. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we've worked together in a number of ways. So, um, it'd be interesting to see how this goes. But let's, I'm going to have you start in a way that we don't usually start. Okay. You came to Free Training Day Mid-Atlantic this year I did. because you had a good time last year. I, oh, absolutely. Why did you come last year? Um, well. Because there's, right, there's there's risk in attending an event. Absolutely. Like, you kind of knew me. Yeah. You kind of knew what Whistle Kick stood for. It was kind of local. Right. You didn't have a lot, of, like, yeah. relationship with other people. Right. So there, it's. It's scary to do it was, that It was stuff. scary, and it, it's and it's even now. Like it, I think maybe it's because I'm in the station of like, like I should be doing more scary things to expand myself, <laughs> sure. right? And it's, it's kind of what we do as martial arts. We do scary things to get better. But um, um, there was the initial invitation from you and how great mm -hmm. it was, and then Jenny reached out, mm -hmm. never met her, yeah. acted like she was my best friend in the world. Which is great. That's kind of her and first like, hey, color. I want you to come. We love you, Jenny. Yeah, come here and do this. And um, and oh, by the way, we think it would. Jeremy said it would be be great if you would teach. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> it was one of those scary, but like I felt like honored to be even asked yeah. to do that on upon my first time being there. Yes. And 
normally to go to any event for the first time, I would not offer up to teach. And we and usually on a, uh, we usually don't invite people to the, the word we use is present. We do that. In, present. Yeah. You know, this isn't a mid Atlantic commercial, so I don't, we don't need to right. dig into that. But we don't usually do that. But we had enough time in that I had a sense of who you were. Right. Not because t- to me it was less about is, is, does Nick know his stuff. It was more is Nick going to treat this in the right way, mm-hmm. right? Because if 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 somebody has a good attitude, they'll convey information. Because mm-hmm. if they're a good instructor, they'll put in the time they need to. Mm-hmm. If they're a bad instructor, they'll put in the time they need to. Right. Yeah, that makes that makes sense, and. I, I, it, it was a neat, it was a different group that mm-hmm. I think there was the opportunity to, to show them something. And it was almost a test for me to see, like, can I convey this to people I don't know Yeah, and, and, and get it across to them that I thought was a great opportunity to do that, which is why I'm like, you, it took a little him and hong with me to, to get over that, that initial fear of like, mm, I well, don't that, know that's these people. Of, I mean, but almost everything same... we've talked about, there's been him and hong. Like, right. I, I, yeah. I, not, nothing that we've I'm, talked about. Have you, uh, given in easily right i'm, okay. an, I'm an analyst by, by nature, <laughs> clearly i with with i don't know when i say like pessimism uh, it's spiced in there some skepticism, skepticism some cynicism, definitely cynicism in your personality. Like, yeah. I, have, I have this i have the isms that that tend to work out <laughs> is, is is not in a, not the terrible ones but like the skepticism and the cynicism yeah they they keep me a little guarded, sure, a lot guarded. If the people that are listening now are going, mm, yeah, right, <laughs> but um, but I knew it was like I had to try it, like so, I decided to do yeah. it. I, I signed up for it, and I had a great time, and also had a great time with all the other presenters and going to classes. And what yeah. I liked about it was, I wasn't there to present all day. Right. It was one, it was right. one thing, and then you got to train afterwards. And yeah, it was it was really it was a really nice experience, and I had to come to this one again because. It was just, it was such a great one last sure. year. It, the, the whole reason I, I wanted you to talk about that, and the reason I wanted to set this up is because you are a very interesting martial artist to me in terms of the things that you find interesting. Mm-hmm. Last year, I mean, you are a, a Tang Sudo practitioner. Correct. Last year, you taught a session on Qigong. Yes. Which, by the way, if I'm remembering my numbers correctly, was the best attended session of the day. And this year, you taught a session on hand axe or hatchet or whatever, right? Like a small mm-hmm. single-handed mm-hmm. axe as a, a weapon mm-hmm. with a curriculum that you developed kind of in a vacuum. In a way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which, you know, um, as, as an aside, Mark Warner, who's been on the show a number of times, he and I had a quick chat about that, and Mark paid you one of the highest he compliments was, I've ever heard, which was he's doing things he doesn't even realize he's doing. Yet. You know, as a yeah, guy, as a guy who is expert it, level in, in Filipino martial arts, right. just, he was blown away at what you would come up with. And I'm not, it's, I'm not bringing this up to blow smoke, right. but that here you are a Korean practitioner teaching a, you know, when you're, you're teaching a, would be considered Qigong Chinese? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. because that, Qigong is the Korean pronunciation of Qigong. Okay. And, and all right. it, it's all the, the practices. Yeah. Is, yeah. Okay. So, t- you know, with, with a strong passion for something of Chinese derivation, mm-hmm. and then going after something that, you know, we could, depending on how you look at it, it's, you know, it's, it's Filipino, or maybe it's kind of, you know, you could even slot in with like the HEMA, the historical European mm. martial arts folks mm. on that. And that's, that is eclectic. I mean, mm. that, that is the, to me, the definition of eclectic. But I've watched you in, in teaching those things. You are incredibly passionate about these other two things. And mm. I know that you're passionate about Tang Sudo as mm. well. So how does that happen? <laughs> um... It's fusion. It, I right? mean, like, it, it's just like, like it could be my own version of ADHD because <laughs> okay, I just liked I, it a lot of right. different things. Well, you put it that way, I can um, relate to it for sure. But there's there's also like I've had a lot of exposure. Like, so like we belong to the large organization, and yeah. um, 
there's a lot of people with a lot of different backgrounds. So there are people that have Filipino martial arts background that might have presented something that I might have just, you know, absorbed as a snippet sure, sure. as going through or like the jujitsu and like everybody's so like when we go to our clinics, like you can go to different ones, just like yeah. pre training day. And um to to use the Mark's terms, I guess sometimes I'm just you know, I go to them, I absorb and I'm just I think it's by nature. It's like you're gonna add what you've learned from somebody else mm. into your own thing. You just be, kind of comes your own the amalgam play doh ball of whatever as you as you mold it into what yeah. what's yours eventually. So I, I'm just interested in a lot of different things, in martial arts, and I think like the key of it is I like the movement of it all. Mm. And the more I train, the more I realize like all the arts just have different methodologies to get to the same thing. Yeah. And the purpose behind what why people do the martial arts is individual and, and purpose driven like within individual individual wise but um as far as the training methods i think once we get to a certain level we all start doing the same things and then the light bulbs go on like like with mark he's like oh i'm, I'm doing this i'm like yeah I, there's only so many ways i can move my body in relation to like everybody else right. so you know when i put a weapon in my hand we go from a stick that has a certain weight to it to an axe that has like the heft at the end to, to a little bit of extra gravity at the end of the, at the end yeah. of it. I'm like, hmm, I just have to make this adjustment to what and I already do. In a sense, the axe is even more limited because you're probably not going to hit someone with the flat of it unless you're unless I yeah unless you know, I don't want to lay into them with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right, right. right. Like, like there, there's there's some interesting but stuff like there. The sword cuts are very similar to a lot of the blocking and movements that we do, that and sense. like staff movements. So, so all these movements that we're constantly doing as martial artists in our individual styles, I, I think if, if you keep training them, we all tend to merge, which is, I think, why these free training days work out so well, where it doesn't yeah. matter what style you are, we all have this base level of understanding, and then now we get to integrate in, and then add that flavor of everybody yeah. else's thing, and then grow that way. And I, I, more of the, I think more of these types of events are necessary, where we all get together and share. Sure. Um, because I, I was having the conversation with Jenny, I think I'm... For me, like the tradition of mark, like traditional martial arts, tradition of martial arts isn't just you do the same thing forever, because this is what the instructor did that invented it. I don't think that was their intention, um, because as times change, that the the reason you're doing that thing might change, so that's going to influence the method in which you in which you teach it. And I feel like we're constantly streamlining in these other influences to right. evolve our arts. And I think, I think as the arts, these arts start to evolve, like I, I, styles are important in a way to, to, to preserve history, but I think styles are starting to kind of, and I've heard you say this in, in a different way where like style really isn't like, nobody cares that I do tongue sit out at the school when they first come in the doors. Right. Like they think they have a bit karate. of background. They just like, I mean, it looks like so some people that have, and I've seen it before, they're like, oh, you're doing Shoto kind of like, hmm. doing tongue sit out. It looks a lot the same, but sometimes it doesn't. Um, but that's it. I'm trying to think where I was going with this point, but, um, well, you, you, you made me think of something around art, right? Like we, I've said it on the show many times and, and people get bent out of shape, not so much our audience. Cause most of the ones that want to argue with me don't hang around anymore, <laughs> but, uh, not, not that I don't invite criticism and feedback. I mean, mm -hmm. you know me well enough. No, I, I enjoy a good conversation. I enjoy a good debate. We had plenty of that at the, at the Airbnb, right? the last couple nights. Uh, but if you think about art, right, and it's a martial art, so it is primarily an art that is of the type martial. Mm -hmm. Every other art I can think of, whether I'm talking about music or painting, the artist gets really bored when they have to do the same thing over and over again, right? Yeah. Like it, it is it is cliche for longstanding musicians Oh my God, we don't just want to play our first album mm -hmm. or our second album. We don't just want to play these few hits. Like we want to play some of the new stuff we made for you and the crowd, you know, depending on the band, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they make a deal with the crowd. I've, I've been in crowds where they've said, all right, we're going to play a couple things off our new album. If you're good, we will also play this old the stuff. You, like. <laughs> that, you know what? We're, we're a little sick of playing it. Mm -hmm. Like, let's be real, but we know you're here to hear it. You haven't heard us play it live 400,000 times, but we have. Mm -hmm. And, and right, like, right. We, we, I think we could all empathize with that. And so what's the, what's the analog within martial arts? It's, am I going to do the same form or the same techniques exactly the same over and over and over again for the next 20 years? They should change mm -hmm. because 
I'm going to change. Hopefully my understanding of the material changes. My goals change. Where I'm at in life change, right? Like, mm -hmm. And you can't have that that applicability to your life or forget about evolution. Maybe it's a lateral move, but mm -hmm. it's, it's still going to change mm -hmm. if you're honest with yourself about how it incorporates in your life. Right. And I think the, the regiment to learn the basics are, are necessary like, mm -hmm. that we go through. Like, so like those color belt stages that we would call them or um, like a musician is just like, they've got to learn the notes and how to play them properly and, 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 and go through those things. So like, those foundations are, are, are important to, to get like how to stand and how your balance moves like those types of um, qualities or characteristics of certain things are, are necessary to, to, to stabilize and get that good foundation first until you start, you know, adding your bit of flair into it and how it works. But I mean, I'm not going to apply a move from a form the same way as somebody that's, you know, two feet taller than me. Like I'm a short guy. So I, you know, I learn how to use speed a little bit more often and, and, and leverage that a little bit more versus somebody who's got a longer reach than me. Yeah. So, you know, applications tend to go different, but it doesn't mean I'm not interested in finding out what that person's reach is and how they apply that because I might be able to be like, Oh, it helps you understand, I, I, I understand what you're doing, what I'm doing and what they're and doing. And maybe you have a tall student that exactly. you want to help. Cause you know, right. You're, we are, we are not, uh, uh we are not vertically gifted men, no. men, but we we want to help our students as best we can. Right. And so, you know, we both have schools and, mm -hmm. and I've got some taller guys mm -hmm. and okay. Yeah. The reach is different. The way they're going to move has to be different. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've got to step in this way to put this lock on or whatever. And you've got to step differently because your, your stride is different and creates a different angle. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I need to know that so I can best help them. Right. So you stay open. Yeah. And like with, with those instances, I try to speak in like, well, it should feel like it should feel like mm -hmm. this and not tell them like, well, where should I step? Is it 45? Is it 25 degrees here? I'm like, D don't do the math. Where do you feel stable in this position when you go? So, like, Let me get out a protractor. Like Let's measure the angles. Yeah. And like, I, I have a friend that like when people are talking about footwork. He's like, your, your feet are where they have to be. And I, I, I like that. So like I've adopted saying that to people like, well, where are my feet going? I'm like, do you feel stable? No. I'm like, well, your feet put them where they have to be and they fix it. And they, they fix it naturally on their own because they find those points. It's like, yeah. you know, I, I'm not there to teach them how to walk. I'm teaching them how to move more efficiently in the, the context of what we're doing for whatever the practice is. My favorite correction. I don't know that we've ever talked about this on the show. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you do this too. When I'm having students work a front stance mm -hmm. and you know, we, I, we train in, in spaces that have hardwood floors and, you know, so you've got the board so I can have them count boards and we can talk about, you know, how wide are your shoulders and, you know, one and a half to two times longer than wide and all this. And, and intellectually, academically, they, they understand it, but implementing that's kind of hard. Mm. So what I'll do is I'll come up to them, you know, so if, if their feet are, are like this, right? Like, so my left hand is, is the front foot. My right hand is the back foot they tend to stay a little narrow when they're new. Mm -hmm. So I will push them this way on mm -hmm. their shoulder. I'll just give them a push. And the as they fall, mm -hmm. their foot goes to stabilize mm -hmm. where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. That's funny because that's how we learn how to test which leg is supposed to be forward for snowboarding. The, like, and the instructor trainer, like, just shove your student. And we're like, what? And they're like, well, and they ask, like, well, like it. What, what leg do you use forward? I'm like, well, I ride this way. And they... Like, he's like, okay, he pushes me. And I, you know, I stopped that way. He's like, you're going to stop with the leg that should be forward. Yeah. And so that's, it's a very, it's very similar. And that's kind of funny because I, like, I'm trying to get back into snowboarding. I did like once last year. Yeah. So my goal is go at least one more time this year as I get back more, more back into it. But as I'm looking for different ways to keep up with like my fitness, like, so to speak, to do that, keeping the flexibility. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, you know, aching when I'm done, um, the exercises that the snowboarding community does are the, the, are the same as the, what martial artists are doing. There's, and that's another thing I love about like martial arts is all the connections that instead of looking for like, why are the, all these martial arts different, which is, is interesting to me as well, but it's, it's more interesting to me that that's seeing how they're all connected and how this one's sprouted from this one and how this one kind of pushes yeah. the, the evolution of this one a little bit. That, that's, that, that kind of stuff is really interesting. I mean, maybe why it contributes to me doing so many things because like, I'll go and see like, oh, 
this style does that too, and maybe they do it a little bit better mm-hmm. than what this one did. So I'll kind of like just watch, yeah. you know, watch and see and see where I can go and absorb from wherever it is. Let's go in a whole different direction. Okay. When, why, how did you get started? The origin story. Yeah. What's your What's your issue number one? Episode zero. I'm not. I'm not unique. Prequel. Like as far as like an origin story. Like everybody's got the the bullied wanted to do it. I've got them all. Like I was bullied in school. I I love martial arts movies. Mm-hmm. Love scrapping with my brother after the martial arts movies. Mm-hmm. It probably got us in too much trouble. Um. But it was just one of those things where, like, I was, you know, begging my mom, you know, can, mm-hmm. we, can we do karate somewhere? And we moved around a lot when we were kids until we got to um, the we're area where we Always in now. Pennsylvania? Um, always in Pennsylvania, okay. but um, ended up in Northeast Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And um, eventually, like, stable there. And I had friends that are like, yeah, we do this martial art. The first school that I went to was not, the, to, to look at, was not the school that I ended up mm-hmm. at. There was a weird cobra kai vibe i don't know there was some guy who just came back from an injury that he got there it was the sleeveless uniforms wasn't it no but he had like the ring like the the turn and we and they and they taught kempo and we just got done watching what the perfect weapon oh and my brother was like when do we get our rings from that i'm like oh man just calm down and and so like it just the vibe wasn't shout out to jeff speakman for those of you we like we did. I I got the chance to do an episode with Jeff Speakman. It was a great episode. Go go when you're done. I think with this I one, did. I did watch that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. He was, he's um, such a good guy. But so like that school just wasn't it. So like one friend was there, but I had two more friends at another studio. Sure. That we ended up in, and that that instructor was totally different. Very welcoming. Um, and just kind of this is how it is. And it was it was it was a Tong Sado studio, so it was just there. And the funny mm-hmm. part about that is. The people that I started with are no longer training. Mm-hmm. I don't think any from anybody from that original studio are training anymore, wow. which kind of stinks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you, you hate to see people stop training, but it happens all How the time. How long was that? How old were you? I was 15 when okay. I started. I'm 46 now. So okay. this June, what I You're older than me. I didn't think you were older than me. First I thought, year doing more. I thought you were younger than me. No. Oh. I guess okay. I could take it as a compliment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You have you have less less weight in your. I mean, beard. I've got some. some you have gray, and you have a I've, far better I've beard. Got a couple if you're only here. listening to this yeah. episode, you don't you don't you you're missing that. out on yeah. the effort. How long have you had your beard like that? It's been it's been a while. It's a commitment. The story to that's kind of funny because we were at a Ren fair, <laughs> and my girlfriend Alex, she we were sitting there and somebody had a beard. And they're dressed up in the getup. And she looks at me, she's like, I wonder what you look as a, like as a Viking. Like you have and such I go, a solid you know Viking. What? Why not? And I just started growing the beard and like my hair came back. And this is yeah. the exact hairstyle I had in high school, which is hilarious to me. And like really? now that it's popular again. Yeah, this is this is I mean it needs a haircut, but <laughs> this is the same like I don't it wasn't doing the man bun back then. Yeah. And it's just, so I'm not it's not in the way, but um, oh, it, that's that's funny to me for that. But um where were we going with this uh, the Viking yeah. thing? Um yeah, it was just 15. one of those things, but it just fits. It's just I like my yeah. face better with the beard line, I guess. Yeah, if if I two things happen if I shave my beard completely, um, I I get a lot of angry messages mm. from people. Mm-hmm. I don't know why angry. Mm-hmm. Not just oh, I liked your beard, but like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like like. People that care about me, they don't get angry about anything else. They're like, oh, you know, you do you. But mm-hmm. when I shave my beard, they get angry. Uh, and I look like I am 25. Okay. There's something, I, I have just something about the shape of my face that if if you take away the beard, you take away the white hair. Because it's not gray in my beard, it's mm-hmm. white. I get carded mm-hmm. like crazy if I want to get a beer or something. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, can we see your ID, Mr. Mm-hmm. Might still be in college. I'm like, thank you. That's sure. amazing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So you start training at 15. Start training at 15. And is it is it a fit immediately? Yeah. It, it was. A, there was. It was a welcoming group. It was a okay. small group. I mean, I mean, back in the 90s, you know, it wasn't. It was only a certain type of people that went there. It was. It sure. was. It was. Um. I mean, I think there was like one kid in class, like mm-hmm. little kid. That would talk, like train with the rest of us. There was there was no how, separate how kids young class. Are you retiring? Like, um, maybe ten. Wow. Yeah, and I don't think she lasted very long. 
and not not to, to anything it was just it, it was just a different tone yeah he didn't have like a separate kids class um it was just the one class mm-hmm. three nights a week that i came to how many other teenagers were in there um us so it was like Two. a handful like okay. five or six of okay. us seven maybe seven um but my my intro was with this very tall gentleman with a very deep voice, deep grumbly growly voice. That was a little nerve wracking for me. It was like, okay, we're gonna stand here. It's like, and he was like, now you got to do this and, and yell. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? Like, I was the one that took forever to key up. So I that 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 piece helped me give my students grace and like, I, yes, you should be doing the yell, and this is why. And I, yeah. I I wasn't explained why other than it's just your spirit. And my spin on that now is like, you need to breathe properly in order to make this more effective so like if i can't hear you breathing then it means you're not breathing do that please so that that's kind of how i get them to start getting over over that aspect of sure. it before but you know i'm sure you were taught in the same environment i say you do and and yeah. that's it it's only so effective to a certain point yeah um especially if you are a bit of a contrarian skeptic right, right. And, and i have that aspect yeah. of my personality too as a teenager, mm-hmm. you want to know why you're trying to figure out your place in the world. You are doubtful of things. You mm-hmm. want to do them, but you want okay. Well, you kind of got to prove this to me a little bit, right? And saying, "Do as I say, because I say." You'll understand later. Right. It's a, it's a and I think what's nice offer. about the martial arts is it, it, if you give your instructor that trust to mm-hmm. do what they say to do. I think a lot of that, like that, contributes to the confidence because then you realize that, like. If you do this, you're, it's going to have a better output. Sure, and then sure. you're like, wow, look at this thing I did. Yeah. And I, I think that helped me really be, become one of those people. Like, I'm going to get things done. I mean, it might not always be the best way right away. And I might, might you know, fumble through the process. But, like, if I'm determined to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And that's what the training has helped me with a lot. Like, through throughout, like, just martial arts training in general is just realizing that, like, if I put in the work, that there's going to be some, there's going to be a payoff eventually. It might not be right away, and 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 in you know we all have our, our human instances sure. where we go, when is this going to happen? But the satisfaction of just like feeling better from it and, yeah. and doing and doing it and just training is is just I don't I don't know it's indescribable. And the payoff might not be what you want it to be, right? Or expect it to be, right? Sometimes you know? people have to point out that payoff, and 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 yes, absolutely that happens too. Which is good having that that community of a of a good school and a, and a good group of martial artists that you train with because. Sometimes, like, frequently expecting your own achievements needs a little bit of help from somebody else from mm-hmm. the outside. It's like when you're a little, like, what's going on here? I don't, somebody else from the outside, I'm like, well, look at all these other things he did. And, that, and that's good to have, a, like, a good instructor of your peers to do better yeah. with, too. We tend to normalize in, in and out of martial arts. Whatever we are doing, wherever we are at, that's mm-hmm. that's where we are. Right? I, I don't know how many people I know that, you know, they get really excited for the new whatever, the new car, the new job, the the new romantic relationship. And in a relatively short period of time, mm-hmm. as they've normalized that, now they're complaining about it. You know, right. how, how how much of our lives, of all of our lives, of all of you out there, how many of our lives, in how many ways, would, even just a few years ago, we would have done anything to be where we are, mm-hmm. right? You know, and, and it, we have this, this tendency to want more, and that's great, but I, I think we need to balance it out with gratitude for the work that we've put in and mm-hmm. I, I think this is something that we were kind of talking about within alliance and your schools and alliance member and we're, we're talking about how can we get better as an industry helping students understand the mm-hmm. progress they've made i just i think i don't think it was you i was telling maybe andrew and tommy yesterday i got an email after about six weeks of not seeing someone that i you know a student and, and this, this gentleman, he's an older gentleman, mid seventies, came in, couldn't stand on one foot to throw a front kick to the ankle and, uh, you know, using the wall, using balance points. And, and he was, he was one of our, the first students at the first location just over a year ago. And he got to this point where he's kicking to the waist unassisted, you know, for a 75 year old man. And granted he's, he's active, he skis mm-hmm. pretty much every day through the winter but this was just a type of balance and a type of proprioception he didn't have. And he came so far. And he wrote me, he's like, I'm going to take August off. And I was like, I see it coming. 
Mm -hmm. I, I see it coming. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. He's done. Yep. <clears throat> because he's going to normalize to where right. he was and he forgets how far he's come and how, how much better his body is mm -hmm. now with this training. And so I got the email, the sad email, the, you know, I've got a couple new grandkids on the mm -hmm. way and I'm going to spend more time with my family and I had a really good time and maybe I'll come back. And I'm, and I'm looking at it like, mm -hmm. it's an hour a week. I know you've got the time. Yep. You've got the time. But we need to find a way to help them understand that. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's a conversation. And just as an aside, though, if, if any of you out there have good ways of doing that, that you're mm -hmm. doing that, I want to hear them, right? Jeremy, let's look at back on tell me. Because that, that's something that I want to see the industry get better at. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a an older gentleman. He's, he's in his 70s also. And he's... He's there every night of the week mm. and he, he puts all his effort in. And sometimes mm. we have conversations where he feels like, like like other students might have gone and surpassed like where he has admitted rank. And, sure. and I think that's the, the downside of rank is like, it's great for goal setting, mm -hmm. but like we get caught up in getting the next belt so much. We, we don't look at the progress we've made within the belt. Yeah. If that's the only goal. Right. Yeah. So, um, so we, we, we're, we're constantly reminded, like, no, like, look at how far you come. And his wife's constantly telling him, like, oh, she likes me here because my balance has gotten so much better and yeah. this and that. And it gives me something to like to do besides like bother her any jokes and then things like that. So yeah. it, it's, it's good for people. Um, and I think my other, in, in, in addition to you, like helping find students like that to show them like, the, like the, their, their progress within, like while they're there yeah. it is getting more people to realize that. I don't feel like martial arts and like Qigong involved and all that stuff like that, 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 that whole umbrella might, might mm. encompass is, is like an extra kind of like we treat it over like, mm. like here in general in the United States. I, I feel like it's a necessary thing. And like you've mentioned like the puzzle piece thing, yeah. it's got physical fitness. It's got the mental health well being. It's got the aspect of community, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the, the more things we like the people feel better because of it their sleep gets better their stress is relieved like we can go on we, we've all done these lists of things like why we should all be doing yeah. something yeah. like this and to me that sounds like a need it doesn't sound like a you know i need it doesn't sound like a starbucks coffee no offense it sounds like something that somebody should be doing something about this episode day. is not sponsored it's by not starbucks. Starbucks, by starbucks it's just what he's got there um but to me it sounds it's to me, when you start listing all of those benefits to the martial arts, right. it's a need. It's right. not a should do. It's not a maybe I'll do it. It's like you should do this because it's going to make your life better. There are few things that have a guaranteed return on your investment in life. Right? You could, you, you could invest money and lose it all. You can invest in friendships. And maybe you come out of it a better person, but mm -hmm. the friend, the romantic partner, that can end. You can invest in a technical skill set that doesn't serve you in the marketplace. But if you show up to your training, whether that's, you know, you're going somewhere or you're doing it at home, right? A few minutes a day or even a week, you get back in, and I've said this many times, you get back exactly and only what you put in. Mm -hmm but it comes back. Right. And it, all I have to do is try, which yeah, sometimes that's really difficult, but all I have to do is try. Does it mean I'm, I'm going to necessarily get better at the things I want to get better at at that moment? No, but I will progress at something, mm -hmm. right? If you're trying to get better at, you know, some difficult technique or learning a form, Maybe I have, I, I'm taking way longer and my body's not responding, but I'm disciplined enough to keep working on it. Mm -hmm. well, my, my, my discipline is increasing and it's easier to apply that discipline mm -hmm. to other things. There's, there's the return, right? And so I, I wonder, I don't know this, but I wonder, and, and, and I think this is where you were going. I wonder if in the early days of martial arts, as we think about, you know, the, the, the cliche Okinawan, you know, family lineage, which who knows how accurate that is, but you know, as it's being handed down, how much of this was the, the old equivalent of the way a lot of parents give children chores, mm -hmm. right? We're kind of, Hey, you know, 
I'll give you a few bucks a week, you know, is your allowance if mm -hmm. you do your chores. But what are the chores teaching them, right? Like if the kid's doing dishes, it's, it's right. literally teaching them how to do dishes. It's teaching them responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's these things so that when they go off into life, they're better prepared. Right. Could martial arts have not been that? It's like, haha, I'm going to teach you how to defend yourself, but I'm also going to teach you all of these other things. Right. And we don't even have to talk about it because the more I talk about it, the less you're you're gonna trust it right and it's almost like you're like to, to equate it to chores it's like the self-care chores yeah where you're teaching them how to keep their environment clean and orderly and and functioning and healthy martial arts is is your your self-care chores like yeah. you're you're keeping it exercised and and mentally stable and you know, like with your meditative whatever your practices are and how deep you go but like with with the time aspect it, it's it's as as much time as you're willing to put into mm -hmm. it and like I, I've told students, like, I want you to do your best every time you show up. I want you to do your best every time you train. I said, your best is not going to be the same every single day, though, to say like right. what you said earlier is as long as you're giving your best that day, then you've done your best and you're making yeah. progress. And you've probably no seen, one's, seen no one's going to tell you that your best isn't the best. You know, you only know that. Right, right. You, you've probably seen the graphic that I've seen, you know, what what people talk about their best being. And it's it's a series of bar. It's a bar graph right. series. Yeah, yeah. And it says 100 percent. Right. And then what it really is. And it's different height bar graphs that all say 100 mm percent. -hmm. Right. Because I'm tired. I did not sleep well. Strange, strange place, mm -hmm. strange sounds, exciting day, some things I'm concerned about, too much caffeine. Did not sleep well. I'm not at a hundred percent here for the, the the most capacity as this role I've ever brought to a conversation. Mm -hmm. But I've done everything I can do to set this up to be the best I can today. Right. Because one, that's what I think I should do, and two, what else am I going to do? Sit here right. and complain about it and say, you know, Nick, I'm really sorry. Um, this interview is going to suck because mm. I'm sleepy mm. and I didn't sleep well. And yesterday was a really fun day. And maybe, maybe we should reschedule, right? Like we, I could yeah. approach it in right. that way, but why, why, why not, why not do our best to knock it out of the park? And the worst case scenario would be, Oh, it sucked. Let's do it again. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, that's always an option. Right. And I, and I think I'm fascinated by very successful people, mm -hmm. however we define success, right? And, and money is often an easy way mm -hmm. for us to kind of agree. Yeah, that person has put in some work. They are successful. But regardless of whether it's financial success or not, successful people, when they are asked, why are you successful? Whatever iteration of that question, they all have the same answer. I showed up. I kept showing up. I didn't stop showing up. I didn't quit. They might say it a different way, but that's all they're ever saying. It's all I ever hear them say. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll throw in, you know, I got some help. There was some gratitude. Um, I got lucky. But they have to persist along those lines. And, and you know, in, in Taekwondo, persistence being one of the tenants. Does Tong Su have, have the tenants in the way? Yes. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in a lot of martial arts schools, even even non Korean schools, have something mm -hmm. like that. We we have some have some in, in my school, and this idea of just uh, I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep giving whatever my best is on that day. Right. How, how do you talk about that with your students? Um. Because you've got a bunch of teenagers. I've got, a, I've got teenagers. Yeah. So I've so they a... need that guidance. They right, show in. Absolutely. I'm sure you've got enough time in with at least some of them that you can see walking in the door. Mm. Their hundred percent today is not, is not what their hundred percent yesterday. Yes. And, and yeah. And then, and sometimes you, you and I think I've had a couple of conversations like recently with the classes where, um, and we just had a recent like belt testing and some were having trouble with like practice time and stuff mm. like that. And, and it's kind of where like, the last conversation like doing your best and, and it came up but i also kind of told them and to the other side of this i said i'm the last person to gripe to about time being an issue because when i started i was a teenager with a part-time job full-time school mm -hmm. and then i trained my tongue sado and i got through it and i said 
if you want something bad enough, you're, you're going to fit in the effort and the time to, to do your, your best. So yeah. like, if you guys want to progress, then you're going to put in that time yeah. in spite of those yeah. things, because you can't change the reality of like, you have these other responsibilities. Right. And if you're going to add on other things you like to do, you're going to have to, you know, find a way yeah. and we'll help you do that. And I said, and then, and then that's when I offer up, like, I'm here for extra private lessons. I'm here to pull me aside after class if, for a couple minutes. If, if, if we have the time, there's other instructors in the building that are more than happy to guide you through anything that yeah. you might be a, ask a peer that might have had the same issue and then they got through it. So that you offered them just other solutions to, to if they're having issues or with, yeah. with that, somebody, the, the somebody opportunity is there. The opportunity is there. There's somebody here and, and there's that community again, like somebody here might've been dealing with some of your same struggles or similar. Mm -hmm. Talk to us, let us know, get us involved so that we can help you and we can all move forward. I, I suspect you'll agree with me that with this, this is, this is probably the opinion that I have that receives the most pushback. I don't, I don't know that I've mentioned this on the show before. I, I post this on social media once in a while, just because I, I enjoy seeing the mental gymnastics that people mm. go through to try to refute this statement. We all have the same 24 hours. Mm. How we spend that time is a refle direct reflection of our priorities. Mm. And so people will push back and they'll say, well, but I have kids. Well, your kids are a priority. Yes. yes. And they should be. I'm not going to argue that. Right. Or, you know, I have a job. Well, okay. Well, if you didn't have that job mm -hmm. and you don't have the money to not have the job, then other things would probably fall apart. So it's good that you have a job that reflects your priorities. Mm -hmm. And when I have students, when you have students, when any of us have students that leave or they don't invest the extra time or whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? They, they, they don't slot martial arts in maybe in the rank order that we do mm -hmm. or the rank order we wish they would because we see the benefits that they would reap right. from that. It's a reflection of their priorities. They don't prioritize right. it. They find something else to be more important because they see more value in that other thing. And I think mm -hmm. quite often it's because much of the value in martial arts requires reflection, not person, not, you can't see it coming. It's, right. Oh, look where I am now. Right. Yeah. And I think my challenge for me personally is I expect me out of people on a regular basis, <laughs> which gets me in fights. Um, because how dare I, you I, not be exactly like me? Well, well, I, get, I mean, it's, you know, my standards for myself are very high. Sure. And then, um, unfortunately I put that input upon other people that, you know, may or may I not. Don't, I don't know that's necessarily unfortunate, but it's, well, I, I, I mean, think it's it, natural. Sometimes it causes pressure. Sure. And within the studio, um, not everybody's there for the same reasons I am for the same, with the same drive, but they're there and they're, they're, they're working and they're enjoying and they're still doing it. Yeah. So the the challenge is to expect the standards to meet the next level mm -hmm. whilst also not putting on the pressure of that. Like I tested every three months and I put in the work to do this. And I got here in every testing cycle. I hit that one because that was my goal. Not everybody's there. And I think like, that's one of my challenges to like where I kind of get grumbly as an instructor. I'm like this person didn't show up this week and blah, blah, blah. And I know they went on vacation. They didn't practice one damn time. And it is is like, and I, I do get in those grumble fest words. I have sure. to get reined in by my non martial so I'm like, yo, we're not all nuts, sure. not jobs like you. And then sometimes that's sort of, like, I, I kind of make a joke. I'm like, yes, I was a crazy person with the martial arts. I was highly driven that cause that was my one thing. Yeah. Right. I didn't do like, I didn't do it, football. It, I didn't do organized sports. Um, you know, like I, I, you know, I did snowboard, I was the snowboard instructor to, uh, at a point and, um, like I, I dabbled in skateboarding, but it was nothing that was like a career like thing. Like I've been doing martial arts longer than any job I've ever done. Mm. I've been doing martial arts longer than some, any person has done at some jobs. Like it, it's, it's crazy how long I've been doing this, yeah. but, um, my, part of my challenge is reminding myself that like that's not the same path everybody else is intended on for their having like their martial arts journey. Like they're not a career martial artist. This is maybe an enhancement to their life or an extra hobby for them. And, um, I have to remind myself a lot, like just happy they're there and they're learning, but also they still need to do it in order to maintain yeah. a certain level of standard persistency to pass it on 
what I would consider the right way. And my way is not the, the end all be all, but we all, are, we all of instructors have a certain way that like yeah. we want to see things done in order to move to the next concept so that they mm -hmm. can continue to, to grow. Sure. So that I think that's like where my biggest challenge is as an instructor is not expecting master Acri out of all the students as they come up through because they're not me. But by definition, they're not you because if they, this is something that I, I try to get the, the clients that I work with to understand whether it's a martial arts school or something or not. By definition, you are not your target demographic. You can't yeah, you be. You told me this. Whether if you're if you're talking about being a martial arts instructor trying to reach prospective students or you know a, a veterinarian trying to convey your availability of veterinary services to pet owners, your clients and potential clients, students, aren't you. They're not, they're never going to be you. So you can't reach out to them like you. Mm -hmm. It would be really easy if there were 500 Nick Acres out there in your local area that wanted to do martial arts because mm -hmm. they need to be like, hey, come here. Yep. And they'd be like, oh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. And they'd never leave. And right. you'd just be like, sweet. But that's not how it works, no. right? Like all we can do is change our behavior. Right, so we're we're coming back to this idea mm -hmm. again. How do we better convey the value? And I, I think it's something that the industry is working on because we're seeing more and more people pulled in more and more directions. Mm -hmm. Whether it's you know, where, where's my phone? My phone's over there. Mm -hmm. We were talking about phones last night and right. the, the the challenges of parenting children today with phones and, and um, you know the good and the bad. And how do you try to maintain as much of the good with the phone as as the bad and well, removing the bad and, and, you know, we as adults are not immune to the downsides of phones and social media, but we want the good out of mm -hmm. it, right? So, so trying to navigate that and orchestrate the things that we do that benefit people, this magic puzzle piece. And I, and I, I do, the more I use that metaphor, the more I like it. It's, there's no one answer, right? right. We're, we're hunting for yeah. it and we're, we've all got pieces and we're getting better as we, as we share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like how many instructors have, like in my case, have their parents had had parents bring kids and be like one of the reasons I want my kid here is because I need to get them off the screen, right? And it is a common statement, right? And so, like, I mean, we're com and in, in as instructors, we're combating with that too mm -hmm. to try to get them to you know, I told students this: you're not going to get any better just by coming here. The nights we have classes, one or two nights a week, whenever you come, and then also not. Kind of filling in those gaps with a little bit of like your own self-reflective practice and trying to impart that upon them um but what am i comp competition with on that end it's you know phone time video game time you know and i'm, I'm i can beat my, myself with those things you know like i, I like my video game time sure. so do I. um and i don't know what the answer is in order to pull or integrate that, I mean, I have, I mean, I personally for the studio have, have an app on the phone. So at least if they're going to use their phone, like, hey, open your app every once in a while. Look at one of the forms and practice that. Yeah. And then go back to doing whatever you're doing. So, like, I try to, like, spice it in there. I'm like, oh, or on the YouTube, or, when don't skip the ad anymore. Do a form or practice something you did or get some exercise and do some jumping jacks. So you're sure, not sure. just sitting the whole time staring at whatever reels or whatever they're called on whatever you're scrolling through. Um, so... I don't think fighting it, it's just going to, it's going to be here. So just trying to figure out a way to also integrate it in with, with that to get them to get off the screens and, and maybe do some extra mental health stuff rather yeah. than. Yeah. It's, I, I think, I think there's a, there's a pivot coming in this mm -hmm. whole thing because if we, if we watch the trajectory of it, right, we see what's okay. It's more, it's more, it's more, and there's a tipping point mm -hmm. and we're seeing more and more people pushing back now saying, eh, something's not right here and right. we're trying to navigate that but I, I think like so many other things i observed a long time ago that most new technology the pendulum swings out and it reaches a crescendo and it comes back and i think we're close to if not already at that crescendo i think it's, it's going to start coming back soon if it hasn't started mm. already and we're going to find more and more that people are saying eh, maybe i don't need that mm. maybe maybe i don't need seven social media platforms right Maybe you don't need to post on all of them all of the time. Right. Right. This is something that we talk yeah. about internally as Whistlekick is something I talk about with schools. How, how do we, how do we balance that time? 
you know, we want the benefit of, of using social media to recruit and retain students. But I've got a finite amount of time it's and how a, and I it's spend it. It's a lot of work. And we, I, we mentioned this last. It's a lot of work to be an influencer. You know what I mean? Like posting schedules and making sure you're out in front of the public that are scrolling through to break break the attention. And they're, you know, they're yeah. already being advertised every time they scroll. Like, yeah. you know, some, sometimes you can go through and count, like, how many do I get to before I hit an advertisement? But the, the average is, today is, is crazy. 50,000 mess advertising messages per day is what people are saying. And that's nuts. Yeah. And then, like, you know, the, what's the most recent one that came out? Threads. When I heard about Threads, I went, great, there's another one? I'm not even even signing up for that. The, just the, because, just added, like, no way. It's, Thank it's you very not much as toxic no. yet. That's that's the one upside. Right. I'm using it in the way that I would use Twitter X. Right. But less toxicity. Yeah. And so that has been enjoyable. Okay. But uh, it's just but, one yeah. more thing, though, but and I don't want one more thing on my phone. I'd like to get rid of most of the things on my phone. I want to get rid of all of the um, things like on my phone. It, it, well, there's that. And it's like, <laughs> I want to get rid of my phone. I want, I want to... Even myself. Like, yeah. I find myself in scrolling death traps, and and then now, like, I started you know, door dashing for an extra you know, couple bucks, and, yeah. and now I feel like I'm one of the other zombies walking around with my phone in my hand, staring, walking you're... up streets, because I'm looking for addresses. Right, right. You know, it's, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. Um, and that's martial again, arts. that's, and that's, you know, you got to go and do more martial arts. So that's, yeah. it's, there's got to be some way to, to, to reach. And like, yeah, we can do like, there's YouTube videos and people can sign up for courses that way. But like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to maybe see numbers, like who's actually doing those, like who, who buys those courses and does them on a regular basis. Well, you have courses, like you, you I, know how hard it is to get I, people to sign oh, up absolutely for stuff. Absolutely. 100%. You know, we know how hard it is. Yeah. We, we, we've got, we've got the, the. The Matic courses, the martial arts teacher training and certification, we are bringing that to an, the level one, at least mm -hmm. online. We're working through that right now. And it, it's such a, a, a tough thing. It's, it's the number of people who could have attended yesterday's event, right? right? How many martial artists were within simple proximity and knew about it? And it's free, mm -hmm. so you just have to show up. Mm -hmm. We set the bar really low. You know, you should probably be 12 or up for a free training day. You should probably have been training for like six months, maybe 12. There's a lot of schools that are very close proximity to this I, very area that like, I that would, place should have been rocking. I would Not guess. Not that it wasn't. It was rocking in its own way, like, right? But like, we should have been like mosh pit in there, there for the amount of people that, that lost gym. out on the opportunity to get some training in. The capacity on that gym, there was the sign outside, was 450. Mm -hmm. If if it had been, so I, I live in Vermont, and uh, you know who who's who's the hot musician of the moment? Noah Kahan. Kahan, you're right. Funny. You think I keep up with that stuff? No, <laughs> but some of you out there know that name, and you should have seen what happened when he announced that he was playing a local show as as a benefit mm -hmm. at our fairgrounds. Crazy. We're a tiny state. We're six hundred thirty thousand people, mm. and people lost their minds. So, the the willingness to do some things is out there, mm. but getting our community to right. do things is not right. always easy. Yeah, and and I, I think in you know it's interesting. We keep coming back to this this theme of they don't they don't know, right? We're not, we're not doing a great job of communicating the value to them. Right. Other than look at what happened in hindsight, which we agreed. We don't even do a good job of that. Right. Much of the time. Right. So we keep working, and, working to solve that. And I, and I hate to say like, but some of my thought on there's, I, I feel like there's still a lot of division within like the industry of marketing. Oh, of course. Where I, I don't even like engaging in a lot of conversations on Facebook, especially in the martial arts trying, world, because to... it starts out with even if it starts out with a great question or an insight or a, a, a whatever, yeah. there's tons of keyboard warriors that will tell you why it's wrong or why yeah. you're an idiot or it's like it's yeah. it's very unconstructive. Like yeah. we don't like we don't support. There's not a whole lot of support, and I don't know what the function is and why it is. And then I, some of it, I think there's that old school mentality. Like if you go to this school, like you're disloyal and you might leave me and I don't understand why that is anymore because if you're doing a good job as an instructor I feel like your students aren't just going to jump ship for no yeah, reason it's, I, I've got I've got my speculations on that I, I think a lot of it's fear and then I think you know if we talk about the online piece you know just as you're saying I don't want to spend more time online than I have to mm -hmm. so that 
that kind of pushes people into being as simplistic as possible. And you can't have an intelligent conversation without nuance. Nuance right. takes time and energy. Right. And so people are going, you're dumb. Because that's quick. It's quick it's to really call quick. someone dumb. Yeah. And then you can dismiss their opinion. You don't have to open your mind. You don't have to learn. You don't have to consider that what you're doing could be done better. Mm -hmm. And now you've saved yourself a lot of time and energy. Because mm -hmm. they're dumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, think about even some of the videos that get posted. The fact that there is a whole site devoted, and I'm not going to say the name so we don't get Shout out to Rob. He's been on the show. But We're talking about McDojo Life. Okay, that's the one. I, I don't know. I have issue with that because it's devoted yeah. just to showing. I mean, and it, we all know there's trash martial arts out there. We all know there's ridiculous things that people are doing, whether it's lack of understanding or they're just, you know, whatever reason it is that us in the, uh, the little bit more educated side of it go, come on, dude. But it's why I don't understand like, why we're making this. Better. Why are we making the spectacle? It doesn't why is make, it necessary because because it makes it, us feel better about ourselves. It's when you it's can, another form of bullying. It is exact. It is exactly and, what it is. And I it think is. that's why it bothers me so much. And even like even when it is ridiculous, it's a ridiculous video of some guy yelling sixteen times before he breaks a board. Why is it necessary to even put it on the internet? And, and but does have he a get bunch something out of it? it? No, if he gets something out of it, right? Then, then but I'm, if he posted it for, but the the fact that we posted it in in a in a negative way, yes. I think really it, bothers me. Because and, and, I, and this I is, dealt with that bullying. Like, yeah, not, and, like, and not I've necessarily in, in, on the. I've criticized side. some of the stuff that that Rob's put up, and and you, you know, if if you go back, if, if you go back and, and, you know, I'm I'm not saying Rob Ingram shouldn't do what he's doing. I'm not right. saying Dojo Life shouldn't exist. If people enjoy watching those videos and hate right. watching them, by all means, mm -hmm. right? Like. I'm I'm not criticizing that in the slightest. Mm. If if I'm remembering our timeline correctly, we were the really one of the first that I reached out to Rob. I was like, "What you're doing is interesting to me. Mm. I don't always like and agree with what you're doing, but I find it interesting, right. and I know a, a portion a portion of our community finds that worthwhile. So come on the show, okay? Right? And we yeah. had a good chat, and he's a good dude. I like Rob, mm -hmm. But there have been some videos that went up. I'm like, why is this up? Like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. even, even even if I'm looking at things through through your lens, what's going on here? And, and you know, we, we've gone back and forth on a, on a couple of things. And, and, you know, still like him, still right. support him doing what he's doing. Right. We don't have to agree. Right. And I think that that's an important piece. We don't have to agree. And there are things we've talked about. We don't quite agree. We were right. having some interesting philosophical conversations this morning mm -hmm. around... Uh, um, we wouldn't even have to go get into it. Right. Non-martial arts subjects. Yeah. And it took some time and some mm -hmm. energy. There was some nuance. Right. And being able to look each other in the eye, there there was... Uh, I don't want to get... There, mm, I'm thinking about a, a tangential example, and I don't think I want to put it on record. But let, let's just say that as, as Whistlekick has grown we receive criticism and personally I receive criticism and I, I try to hear it and I, I try to, I try to respect it because I, I want people to feel, I never want us to be in a position or for me personally to be in a position where you, you can't reach us, you can't reach me and you can't make a critique. I, mm. I want to hear that because how else do we right. get better, right? The very nature right. of what we do as martial artists requires us back and forth, challenging, testing, bettering each other. Right. And I think that's, that's incredibly valuable and I want to maintain that, mm. but it's got to be done in the right way. It's got to be done with an eye towards mutual benefit. If you and I spar, right. Right. Like we might push each other. Mm. I, I, I might not have the best control and, and maybe pop you and, mm. and you're like, Hey, I don't like that. Right. And, and so maybe there's some tension there, but the effort is still, Right. Respectable. Right. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. It's, it's, it was quite the detour. Right. It was a, very, it was a big detour. <laughs> Most um, of our conversations are all detour. That's, that's, that's yeah. kind of how they go. Yeah. Um, I'm good with that. I'm not really sure. It's okay. Um, okay. Let, let's, let's do this. I sure. want to make sure that we talk no. about the, the courses that you have. Oh, okay. Because I, I want people to know yeah. that those are available. Yeah, this, this is the, the and, humble me. is like, I don't talk about, like, this yeah. is, and this, this whole thing for me, like this, the, the, the interview process is weird because I'm not 
the one that yeah. talks about my cell phone no, a lot. I'm aware. Uh, and yeah, I know you're very aware. It's like one of those things that <laughs> it almost makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> but it, 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 but it I, makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And that's and that's why, you know, I don't know that I've said it for a while, but the whole premise of the of the show originally was I was around these great martial artists that told these great stories. And when I would ask them to talk about them again in a more formal setting or in front of others, they got mm-hmm. really shy. Mm-hmm. It was like, so it requires us being at a, a martial arts summer camp and you get two or three beers in you and then you'll tell the great mm-hmm. stories, but you won't tell them, you know, in front of a class. Mm-hmm. Or, and I was like, that's so weird. These are great stories. You're talking about these, these people that you've trained with that we, you know, we know their names, we've bought their books and they've passed away. And let's like, let's pass on this, this knowledge. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. You're not, you're certainly not. Alone. I, I, I forgot to mention, uh, two things that I, I want to say them now sure. before I forget. And the first is, um, Kataro has a, a special okay. gift for you. We're going to, we're going to connect you with them. That's something Excellent. they're doing as part of their sponsorship. And I'm really thankful for that. And I also want to thank, uh, Matt and Jenny Nather for the use of their space here. Oh yeah. Very much. Thank you. Um, was... you know, Jenny's out there, Matt's with the kids and, uh, you know, they, they're just such wonderful supporters of what we do. Jenny takes care of all the books and, and, you know, Matt drove to free training day Midwest, like just drove from Pennsylvania to Kansas because he wanted to help that event succeed. I mean, just, mm-hmm. you know, so dedicated the two of them and I appreciate them and this and, 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 and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So you have two online courses. Yes. You've got the Qigong course mm-hmm. and you've got the, the axe course. Mm-hmm. Where do people find them and what would they find? Check um, those out. They can find them on my website. Um, which we'll have linked, but it is, it's jnamtraining.com. Okay. J E J A E N A M training.com. Okay. No funny um, hyphens, or no anything. funny hyphens or okay. anything like that. Just click the menu button, hit courses okay. it'll, or more. I think it goes, takes you to the courses page. You can sign up through, sure, sure. through that. Um, so yeah, like the key going, it's a basic, basic course, just kind of Intro, Taking zero intro, experience zero required. Experience required. And, and what is what is Qigong for anybody that doesn't right, know? So we, we actually, I thought we were going to get deeper into that, into that and but we just, we didn't get know, there. So the Qigong is, is like people think of like, he is the force. I feel like the people that are not really into like all like, or they look from the outside, like he is the force because that's how people describe it a lot. Like, it's just energy. Like, like, Do you teach there, people to force use... choke people? No, oh, okay. actually I don't. Um, but <laughs> can, you, can you imagine how many if you said if you told people you did watch the sun my website go crazy um no um so like i mean the key is also in it also references like breathing and and mm-hmm. just energy movement in general and gong it just means work so you're just you're doing energy work or breath work so when i tell people we're going to do qigong like we're going to move and we're going to breathe and we're going to we're mm-hmm. going to connect our body to our mind using the the, the coordinated breathing with the movement mm-hmm. And, and for me, when, when I, I mean, it was, it was funny. Cause it's one of those things like grandmaster Shinny started. He's like, it's, it's at a clinic. You're doing it. Cool. I didn't like to run. So I was all for it anyway. Cause I hated jogging it hurts my knees. And I, 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 I thought it was cool. It sure. felt nice. I always felt good when I was done. Mm-hmm. I felt relaxed. Um, and then as, as the, that grew, I spent more time mm-hmm. getting into it. And then I realized that like, if I did a, like a Qigong set, I can actually sit and meditate and let the thoughts do what they're supposed to do mm. rather than being my usual ferret brain and just like, oh, I spent 10 minutes so sitting with my eyes closed and I don't feel any better. Mm. But at least with the the movement piece in the beginning, it I'm not I'm still thinking my thoughts. Yeah. But it's hard to think your thoughts and be like, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, the next so like you're kind of distracting your mind in a way that it's good for it. And um breathing in that way is super healthy yeah. and it, it, it settles. So then when I go and, and do like a 10, 12, whatever meditation that, that I do afterwards, it's, it's easier to get that, that actual meditation in yeah. to do that and settle that. So, um, that's cool. Giong is just, it, I mean, it literally translates to energy movement or breath or energy work or breath work. And there's so many ways to do it that like the kind of the, the saying within, within our Qigong, Qigong organization is like the key, the best Qigong for you is the one you do. Mm. And again, it's just like martial arts. Everybody should be doing it. It's like, it's the softer side. It's the healing side. It's the side that I feel like doesn't get highlighted in, yeah. in the, in the conditioning. It's parts. less sexy. It's, it is because, you know, it looks really cool to, to, to kick the bamboo tree, 
but it doesn't look as cool to do the stretching exercises and the meditation and the rest afterwards to make sure your leg heals the right way so you can do it again. Can, can you can you imagine a, a meditation video on YouTube? People are just like, I'm meditating. Right? <laughs> You're meditating wrong. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So... Um, All right. So, that's that's why I got and I got I'm even more into it like during the 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 time of that we don't like to talk about anymore, right? Um, because you know we were all the, the year that should not be named, right? Yeah, that one. Um, because we were you know it was it was stressful for everyone and, yeah. and in different weird reasons and like you know as a small business owner it was scary, especially mm -hmm. one where like people come to it. I, it online thing wasn't the the best way to go yeah. about it especially when they're used to coming to a place and getting yeah. out of their house and now they're locked in too. And I have to give my students a lot of credit. They help keep me afloat by like, you mm. know, sticking with me the whole time. And awesome. um, a couple of them did their, did like weekly private lessons over zoom and I would do live class. Like we all did our part to try to keep our, and, and they I, saw the value. Yeah. And I, and I have to give the, the, the members of the studio that, that stuck through with the whole and a lot of credit mm. for pushing through with me. And, and cause it's there, it, they're the reason why this whole yeah. state of work for that period of time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so, okay. but that's, that's, that's why I got into Qigong nice. so much because it was, it, it became a very important piece and, and Grandmaster Shin said it, but it's, it's one of those things that like we should, it, it should be included in our martial art because mm. it's the other side. It, it's the healing side. It's, it's the more gentle, it's the stretching, it's the recuperation, it's the longevity it's aspect. It's the balance. You can't smash and smash and smash forever without doing something on the other end to make sure that your knees and your hips and your heart and all that stuff is going to be in shape and, and along with it like there's there's got to be into the young yeah, yeah for sure all right so there's the qigong, there's what, the about, qigong. what about the axe is is it the stuff that sort of stuff that we worked it's on it's the stuff that we worked on so um i i it's a the the course is basically set up into to kind of two pieces where there's the solo practice mm -hmm. piece and then it shows some of the the partner practice as well so um yeah, it'll teach you how to do the, like the basic swings and strikes, and then it'll take you through a little form where you can practice on yourself. A little practice those. Is that the form we did? Actually, no. Oh, so the form I we liked did that is form. Brand new. That I have form not was put really it in. solid. It's on. It's cool. Video, like unofficially on, like okay. on me on Instagram, doing different things and practicing it and, and that. And I like that one better. Um, the one that's actually on the uh, the website is is a is another beginner form that I just kind of adapted from another beginner form sure. within our art and then I just kind of changed it up and put the axe strikes in there instead. So it, it just became the axe form one, but, um, you know, things progress. And as I started practicing more and more with the, I'm like, wait, I mean, this had to be how the old masters made up forms. They were doing these motions all the time. How do I practice them without a partner? Okay. I put the spirit in, but I just do the movements in a pattern so I could not get bored doing the same thing over and over. Hence, now you have a form. So, like, that's kind of how I created the new one that we did at the um, at yesterday was where I'm like, well, okay, these are the movements that we're doing. Mm -hmm. How do I put these together in a pattern where we can get some repetition in with them? And then now we can imagine our opponent as we get better with the pattern. And that one evolved into what it is. And I like that one better because it makes more sense for me yes. to utilize. But right. so, yeah, that course is on there also. And um, your website. Yeah. Cool. Your Social website. media? Social media, I've got them all. I mean, I've got the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that's all the ones. Okay, we'll, we'll make sure we get all that. Yeah, we we'll get all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, follow, for all of your... follow, the, follow the one for the studio. Follow follow me if you want to. Um, you get pet pictures every once in a while, pictures of birds on my personal one. But <laughs> it'll look into my personal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, like, I like animals and outdoors, so you get to see the martial arts side in the outdoors. If, if anybody follows my personal social media, you see it's like eighty percent martial arts and twenty percent. Huh? Yeah, there, there's there's some some help. Head yeah, my, my interests are going on for sure, head, all over. Yeah, yeah, without without a doubt. This has been great. This has been a lot mm -hmm. of fun, and I, I feel like this weekend I got to know you so much better, and really enjoyed that. How do you want to close, right? So we've got people out there, and they've been on this ride with us. We've gone mm -hmm. all over the place as we always do. But what do you what do you want them to take away? Um, I think a couple things, I, and it's it's you know when you have those conversations with people about like we all come across these people like oh yeah i was thinking of doing martial arts one mm. so i've always thought about doing it if you're one of those people just do it mm. find a place and go to a couple if you're if you're nervous and because you're not gonna you can get lucky and find the place for you right away or it might take a couple but stop just saying yeah I'm, i was thinking about it or i should have done that or it's not too late it's go try it late. 
go try to go try it and give it a, and give it an actual chance. Yeah. Um, and for me, an actual chance is about three months. Like it takes about three months to, to, to really kind of acclimate you because there's going to be mm-hmm. frustrations in the beginning side. There's going to be the excitement of it being a new student. Sure, sure. I feel like your actual chance is, th- is a good solid three months of dedicated. I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. Right. So like that's that's the instructor in me telling you like if if you've ever thought about it just just do it, um, but it's important because I I feel like this is this is like you said the puzzle piece and I, I feel like that's that's kind of the theme of the whole weekend is, um, because it helps with so many things with the, like physical fitness mental fitness community. Name a problem. There's a way that martial there's arts, a way that martial arts, arts is going to doesn't maybe it, solve it completely, right. but it it. It's going to help, right? It's, it's definitely going to help. Um, so I, I think my advice to anybody is just get involved in some sort of, some sort of martial art that, and and it doesn't, doesn't have to be any kind of hard system. It could be, it could be Qigong. I mean, if you want to consider that a martial art under that umbrella, but I I feel like everybody should at least try it. And, And especially if you're one of those people that have been like, yeah, I thought about doing it one time and. And then the other side of it, if you're one of those people that were like, yeah, I got my, I, I got, I, I used to do it or mm. I got my black belt back in the day and you don't do it anymore. Go back. Yeah. I yeah, guarantee you there's a part of you that misses it. And then once you step on the floor, you're going to like it. The longer we stay away, the harder it is to go back, but the more important, right? The, the only one who's going to judge you harshly for you not going back is you. Right. Right. Your instructor is going to be happy to see you come back. Or if it's a new instructor, you know, I, I've had the chance to start over mm-hmm. a number of times and it's awesome it's the best but how about you know the majority of our audience are people who are actively training what do you want to say to them actively training martial artists um something that I, i'm personally just constantly is you know like we talked about tenants and codes yeah. and and we have like 14 attitude requirements also that are in our manual Right. And, and one of them is, is frequently expect your own achievements. Mm. And um, that one for me is extremely important, especially when you get in that lull. Sure. Because another one of those attitude requirements that we have is when you begin to feel idle, um, try to overcome this. Mm. And um, I struggled with this recently for a long time. And I kept asking people, like, how do you do this? Like, I'm idle. Mm. I'm training, but I'm idle. Like, I don't mm. know. Like I feel stalled and uh, I got a couple bit different pieces of advice, but I think what I kind of settled on was if I don't look back and see where I was versus where I am, it's what I need to do. Yeah.